and we are live. Welcome everybody to the 37th episode of the Free Skates podcast. Today, uh, I have the pleasure of welcoming Christian Santana to the podcast. How you, how's it going? Uh, doing good. How are you, Gabe? Pretty good. So uh, Christian has been um, involved on our Instagram community for the past about a year now um, on, on his Free Skates, obviously, here on the Free Skates podcast. And uh, we're going to talk about um, Christian's progression over the last year um, and see how that has gone for him as someone who was previously on rollerblades or maybe is still on rollerblades. We're going to we're going to figure that out. But um, welcome, everybody. Feel free to make yourselves known. I see there are around three or four people currently on the live stream. Feel free to share it out to your free skating friends and uh, also feel free to like the video to give it a little boost. All right. Um, right away, it looks like we're, we have Chris B in the chat right here. What's up guys. Occasional blader here too. So there you go. And then Tahi Ryan King is in the chat. So, um, you say you're a rollerblader. Yeah. So when I was younger, I don't know if people remember this show, but there was a show called rocket power on Nickelodeon. Okay. Um, and they were always on rollerblades, skateboarding and surfing. And it was, it was like based in Southern California. So I started rollerblading when I was younger. Uh, I wanted one so bad. My dad got me roller skates first. Oh, like, right. So I'm there trying to rollerblade like, uh, and can't cause I got the roller skates. Um, over time though, uh, my eventually saved up some money and then I went and got my actual roller skates at like a big five. And I finally got to start practicing. Uh, I used to just fall and fall and fall all the time um, on those things. But eventually I learned um, a pretty, pretty good amount um, until skateboarding came around. Like it was more prevalent in our youth, uh, Tony Hawk's pro skater. Yeah. So yeah, so I started skateboarding a little bit um, and enjoyed that for a minute. But rollerblading was always like more special to me, I guess, because it was first. Okay, you always um, came back to that one thing. Yeah, and I always wished, I'm like, why can't I just have wheels at the bottom of my shoes? And eventually they came out with the Heelys. Heelys. Like the, yeah, they came out with those when I was a kid, and I was like, I need those shoes. And like that was my dream come true, and then I got them, and they were terrible. I could not do much on too. those things. That could um, be dangerous. Yeah, they were, they were pretty dangerous. And my foot felt like I was wearing 10-pound weights. They were really clunky when they first came out. I think they look super nice now compared to what they were. Uh, I don't even know if they still make them, actually, to be honest. But um, I always just hear the Heelys comment, like, hey, nice Heelys. And I just wonder what kind of mental gymnastics they had to do to see the free skates and conclude that they are, in fact, Heelys. But um, I've yet anyway. to have any negative experience while I'm on free skates. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so far, because I've, I've heard in some of your videos that you guys post, you know, that, you know, people might shout at you, like, do a kickflip, you know, and I've been kind of, like, practicing and waiting for someone to kind of ask me to do one so I can actually, I'm like, here yeah. you go. <laughs> but I, um, it's been positive. Everyone's been very nice, friendly. They just, like, say, like, how are you doing that, you know? So definitely different experience than uh, rollerblading. I gotcha. So... You've been rollerblading since how long? Probably okay. So around, I want to say eight or nine. So like, I did like a good ten years before I, before I hung them up for a minute. Okay, and how old are you now? If you don't mind me asking, uh, I'm thirty two. Wow. Okay, thirty two. And so you you but you started when you were eight or nine rollerblading. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's been yep. it. You definitely had some time to get your grasp on, on on the blades so what made you um first come across free skates so the um on instagram i always follow like you know skateboarders skating rollerblading and one day uh, i believe jeff milling uh just showed up on my feed and he was just i just saw him on the skates and he was just doing one of his little infinite spins. Oh, okay. And, and I was like, how are you doing that? I'm like, they're not attached to your feet. I'm like, I want to learn so bad. Um, Cause it was like my dream come true. Cause I felt like my idea was stolen in a way. <laughs> cause, Cause all my life I had pictured of like, I want these, I want to be able to like have rollerblades and then be convenient and 
you know, portable, like a skateboard. You know, there was no happy middle ground because those rollerblades are big. They're like wearing, yeah. you know, they're big boot. So they're they're not portable like very well. Yeah. Unless you have like a big backpack, you know. And so when I saw Jeff doing that, I was like, no way. And then he had a little backpack on. And I was like, get out of town. So I was like, I got to get him. So I tried yeah, him. It's, it's exactly what you were looking for, it sounds like. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. So you saw them on Instagram. That was around what year? Like about a little bit more than over a year and a half ago when I started seeing the videos. Okay. So kind of like during the pandemic and yeah. uh, you're basically like, oh, I, I, I could do this. And you ordered JMKs or did you order something else first? Okay. So yes. Uh, the first thing I ordered was these Amazon like free skates, but they were like made out of wood. Oh, and okay. I'm, and so at the time I'm like, uh, I don't want to invest yet into like, if your guys was like the real deal, I didn't want to invest yet until I feel like I'm good enough. You know, like what if I don't like it? So I got the cheap version and I should have known better. Cause I was already excited. I was already hyped up to get them. So I should have just, you know, yeah, you know, I got what I paid for. So what ended up happening is I started practicing tricks immediately with the stomps and just snapped in half. Like, oh. yeah, just gone. And I was like, I can't, so uh, immediately I was like, okay, that's it. I, I that's I learned my lesson. Uh, I got what I paid for. So you, I, you broke them on the first session, like the the like the second like the second okay. session. But it was it was really early on. I was I was more mad at myself because I knew better. Yeah, and uh, and I'm like I should know. You know, it's worth it's worth whatever price because of the quality of the product. So I I got my JMKs and. Um, I re the first ones lasted me about a, the full year, uh, but I was but that's because I feel I was doing, you know, deer in the headlights, wobbly, you know, barely moving. So they they lasted me a while. Um, they're still they're still great. Um, and then I got new ones as like a, my one year anniversary gift for myself because oh, nice. uh, I wanted to have different ones. You know, ones for without a guard so I could do some grinding, and then one with the guard because I'm not very good at you know grinding yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh, the, those moral of the story is you just, you get what you pay for, you know? So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I could agree. I, uh, we have a few more comments in the chat, uh, but the great one, Henny says, I have the exact story. So it sounds like, you know, this is something that people, not, not just us experience. Um, it's the typical progression. I mean, if it gets you into free skating, um, that's, that's the biggest thing for us. And then eventually, obviously, you see the light. Um, the more, the more you get into it, the more you see your friends in the community. You're like, oh, they're using the JMKs. Maybe I should, maybe I should get the real thing. So, um, cool. So you have two sets. Uh, do you still mm -hmm. use that old one for yes. anything? Okay. Yes. So the, my old one actually, the wheels are a lot better in shape than my newer ones because with oh. my newer my newer ones, I practice heavily, um, you know, stopping. You know, okay. just, you know, scraping them against the, the floor over and over again that like now I, I definitely need new wheels um, for that one uh, there. You can tell, like just flipping upside down, it's like half of a lump. <laughs> it's like it's a weird wave. Yeah, weird wavy shape. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird way. Yeah. So definitely need to get new wheels. But that's I, that was expected. I mean, that's what used to happen to my old wheels when I used to stop too much, you know? Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. I I have two sets right now. One with flat wheels for like more, not stationary, but like small area tricks and then round wheels that I'm more willing to just grind away, grind away uh, when I'm out um, skating the boardwalk and stuff because that wears them down faster. So um, we do have a few more comments. Uh, Matthew Fernandez. Hello, tech. Hello, hello. We have... I don't even know if I want to try and pronounce this, but hello, thank you for joining. Um, Tech says, yo, speaking of Rocket Power, I've been toying with making something like Sam Simulator for free skates and Unity. Um, I remember that, the 900 episode. I want to understand what that comment means. It's an old cartoon. Old cartoon. If I you want it. a good rollerblader movie though, uh, Brink on uh, Disney Plus, that was, a, that was on Disney Channel when I was a kid all about skating and it was like super like soul skater bro like kind of vibe mm -hmm. movie and i i religiously watched that movie when i was uh rollerblading back in the day brink 
You got to check that out. Uh, Chris B says, I learned from inline skates to always get a decent, decent set. So went straight for the JMKs on free skates. Yeah, I think um, we have a lot better reactions as far as like buying the JMKs um, from like experienced skaters or rollerbladers uh, because I feel like they already have that context of um, there's cheap versions of this product and there's the real deal, which for rollerblades especially, I feel like is even more expensive than the free skates. Um, I mean, you could always get something more expensive. It's made out of gold or something stupid, but rollerblades, I I think get up in the like over 500 mark if you get something really nice. Um, so, you know, it's all about perspective there. So going back to your progress, you got your free skates for the first time. Um, you didn't really have much time with the, the initial pair. So we'll, we'll just skip ahead to your JMKs. What did your first, you know, week or so look like? Like how, how quickly were you able to be up and riding? I immediately felt the difference. So the, the, that thickness, that, that, that heavy weight that the skates have, the JMKs, yeah. significantly different versus the other ones. They felt super light, flimsy. Like I felt like I could have snapped it in half of my hands. Mm. Like if I really, looking back, you know, yeah. um, but yeah, the, as soon I think the first week it was all about just standing, and I it felt so natural to stand on them more so than the other ones. It just like the pad just felt like more wide for my foot, you know. Um, the other ones just felt smaller in comparison. The first week of progress, I want to say, took me a while. I think it took me three days to just get pedaling down. Um, three, three days. Okay. Yeah, two three days to get pedaling down, uh, and that's all I focused on. I just focused like one one thing at a time. Like first, I got to learn to move forward. Then I'm like, okay. now can I move backwards? And oh. and and so that, that, I did it in little steps that way to start off. So I learned to start being able to do. I want to say after my first month, I could do the first kind of 180. Okay. Um, you know, uh, because I was able to kind of go both ways. So like. The, nice. Like connecting that that transition became a lot easier. So, how early on did you actually practice your switch riding? Uh, right away, right, right away. away. I, I, because I saw your guys' video <laughs> specifically. Oh. Yeah, I saw that video because I'm like I, I'm a person that I need. I don't like to waste my time, so I want to go and like, hey, what's the most like effective way to learn this? Like, we have the internet now we should not you know i could spend 500 hours outside learning to stand or i could watch this 20 minute video and get a lot of tips so nice. i so i watched the videos and i saw like that I, I at first too i didn't even know you could go switch i assumed it was like unnecessary oh, uh I, like a skateboard you know like sometimes it's not that necessary in the beginning um but so as, as I saw the video, I remember you guys saying like, you should learn switch because you're going to need it for this, this and that. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap. So immediately I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's just not skip that step. Yeah. And I just did the both at the beginning. Which video was that, uh, that told you to go switch? Do you remember? Uh, I think it's just the writing switch video. Okay. You guys, I think you guys just talk about the benefits of it. Yeah. Like that it's, it's going to be needed to do a lot of tricks and I'm like, okay. So that's why I, <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. If it was up to me, I would have waited. I would have waited to do switch. I would have done everything I could possibly do in a regular stance, you know? Sounds like that. went down the YouTube rabbit hole a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Watched a bunch of videos. I'm always curious, like, when people find free skating now versus, like, three years ago, like, when there wasn't the whole library of stuff. It's, like, how many, uh, like... I wonder how many videos people binge. Like if it's all like 100 or 150 of them. I don't know, I don't know how many of them you've seen. No, I've I've like taken clips of your guys' videos sometimes and just like freeze frame 10 seconds and just stared uh, at your guys' feet over nice. and over again just to see the placement. Especially with Jeff because I wanted to do it, um, that, that infinite spin. And he's, I think his he's a goofy right like just yep. his normal way is goofy yeah i'm regular so i have to like go the other way uh, so when i'm watching his videos so it's, yeah. it's a, well, yeah one one tip and i don't know if this is what you meant but one thing to try is screen recording that part of the clip 
and just going into edit and then flip horizontal to turn it into a regular rider. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. I should have thought of that. So literally, uh, you'll be watching him skate regular and be able to follow along with every step because you're also regular. And if you have an iPhone, I know uh, iPhone at, at least, if you have the screen recorded clip, you just press edit and just press the flip horizontal button. Okay. And Jeff is forever a regular rider after that. Um, he has no choice. But um, yeah, so that first month you learned kind of how to 180. Could you go through as as brief or detailed as you want, kind of what your progress looks like kind of over the, the next six months and like up to a year to where you are now? The next six months really became, um, and let me, let me start by actually saying that a lot of my practices are uh, in between my, like my breaks, like during my breaks at work and stuff. I don't okay. actually like, um, I don't take, I don't have that much free time all the time to, to dedicate like, you know, a full day's worth to practice. So I really did break it up into a lot of chunks. So everything I learned has been in bits and pieces just every day. So like if I have three breaks in a day and that's 15 minutes each time, that's technically 45 minutes. Yeah. you know in a day and so I'll, I'll just pick a trick to focus on just one thing and like just practice that for the day and so all three breaks and by the by the third break at the end of the day i feel like i have it down a lot better than when i started and it's crazy how just putting that space in between really did help me versus i used to do the grind when i when i was you know i was stubborn i want to get a trick down so i'm going to do it for like five hours until you know i exhaust myself to the point where it's not fun anymore this way, yeah. it's like I kind of get the best of best of both worlds, where I can, you know, enjoy the enjoy every time. It's pleasurable to go and free skate. It's always a good time. It's never not because I'm angry or anything or like trying to grind or try to do a trick. It's, it's just yeah. to have fun. And then, um, and then that break in between makes it like makes it worth the wait. Like oh, I can't wait to try it again in my next break. You know, so oh, that sounds like a really efficient healthy like productive way to practice your your tricks because like it it it's like you said like it doesn't you're not practicing for five hours so you don't get frustrated you're always excited to get back plus you're you're given like a mental break for your brain to kind of process things which mm -hmm. i know jeff is really into um it's really important for just yeah. I don't know, you, you need time to process things it's like anything else i feel like right and i get that i get that um i got that idea from my job itself because that's that's oh, kind cool. of what i do and and with the behavioral therapy is you know help with maladaptive behaviors and make them and help these kids you know select appropriate behaviors and so we can do that with ourselves and so i did that i applied the same science of my work to myself and be like, and and you do. I, I do feel like I progressed faster than I would have had I done it my old way, which is like just grind it out. Because because uh, I know me personally, and I will grind something out until I'm frustrated with it. You know, like like mm -hmm. until I'm angry yeah. and I'm like I don't want to do this anymore. And then and then who knows when the next time I'll skate. But um, yeah. I guess I never answered the question. Uh, the, my first six months. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just would practice on my breaks and just pick pick a trick and. And a lot, I want to say the first six months was a lot of just learning to just move, move forward, move, you know, to the side. Can I lean to the back? Can I lean to like, what's my limit? How much yeah. in a circle can I go? So it was really just a lot of writing the first six months. The tricks were there in between every once in a while. But it, I think the next six months after that's when I started focusing on specific tricks. Okay. So last six months focus on tricks. So what do you, what kind of tricks did you work on um, and like which ones are you most excited about at the current moment? I still keep chasing that infinite spin. I don't know why I can't do it. <laughs> um, I can tell I, you why I, you keep chasing it. It's because that's what made you want to get free space yeah. in the first place. And, and I don't know why, because I feel like once I learn it, I'm going to look back at it and be like, that's all I had to do. You know, like that moment where, uh, where you just you have that aha moment and you're like oh all i had to do was like lower my foot and i would have just nailed it you know months ago or weeks ago so uh, are you more referring to like a full infinite spin or even just as much as a like a 360. no full i want to do as much as possible okay yeah so i i am still learning how to do that and that's not to say like oh you need to spend five years because that's how long i've been free skating um people can learn it in their first couple of years, especially you, since that's what you're chasing. Um, 
I guess I just haven't put in the time to figure it out either. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I got to watch Jeff's, Jeff's tutorial on that. Yeah, the the Infinite Spin is just like, a, like I said earlier, it's just, it fascinated me so much um, just because I could kind of do it on rollerblades a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but I was better on ice skates, uh, but, the, oh, ice skate. but not, not very well. Like I, I used to ice skate and it's a weird story. Um, my dad kind of just made me and my sister go ice skating like once a week. I didn't, he never signed me up for a class or a course. He would just take us once a week. And I think it was looking back, it was maybe his like date night with mom and, and just, he wanted to hang out or something. And he thought kids just like ice skate. My dad was not a good people person he didn't know anything about kids and okay. stuff very very old school man very old school man so he's just like look i brought you here to ice skate there's video games go go have fun and so <laughs> me and my sister kind of learned that way um but it was weird like it's a weird story of how how i learned to ice skate it's just like yeah my dad just forced me for years to go for about like three or four years <laughs> and that's how i learned but I, I can't do anything crazy i can just do like i can go backwards forwards i can do spins you know as much as like 360s mm -hmm. and stuff but uh, that's about it. Um, but that, but that alone, like it just again, the, that's why I was fascinated with the infinity spin. It's just like it's always just been in my life, and I've never been able to achieve that goal fully. And so, like now, here's come to me. This is round three. I couldn't do it really with rollerblades. Couldn't really do it with ice skates. Here's my chance to come back and do it with free skates. Can I do it? You know. So nice. Uh, we have. Um some new comments that I need to go back around 10 minutes for. Um, I'm new to skating and started on free skates. I went to the skate park, drop into the quarter pipe first try, three weeks in, into skating. Nice. That's awesome. And it's terrific progress, Henny. I, I wish you good luck and stay safe out there in the park. Um, dropping in is pretty scary, so props to you for that. A text says, it's a hell old cartoon. Uh, one of the Skater Kids is a nerd who has a simulator that the main character uses to learn the super McVarial. <laughs> okay. Uh, something I'm totally out of the loop on, but that sounds really cool. Chris B says my blades were 200. Jason Lee says I think a free skating game in style of Jet Set Radio would be Ooh. Cool. I heard of Jet Set Radio. That's Dreamcast I mean. era. That's a, it's an old game, too. Tech says, yeah, I'd love to make a raw free skates physics simulator for a prototype prototyping tricks but i also think there's so much fun potential and using free skates like projectiles and a jet set radio style game projectiles yeah like throwing them kind of i i do i sometimes i go one footed and i see my daughter and as i'm on one foot i'm like i'll just say target acquired fire the missile and, oh. and, I'll like, and i'll just like fire it with my other foot and it'll chase them. They like it. So okay. So as long you, you're not like actually hitting them. No, it. I'm not throwing it. It's just sliding. Target acquired, my child. Okay, um, that's that. That sounds fun. Um, Tex says Captain America style rebounding off the of stuff. Yes. Uh, Crispy says the advantage of free skates. You can skate within a break. Um, within lines, you'd just be laced up by them. Yeah, it, yep. it, just, it makes it super inconvenient with the laces, laces, which is what's nice about free skates. Um, I feel like if I was an inliner, inline skater, or roller skater, I would have to be more be more selective about the times I go out to skate. Like, okay, I gotta take into account I gotta lace up and then find time to take them off. And like when I do take them off, I know that's when I'm done. Whereas free skates, you can be done for 20 seconds and then get back on. It's, it's great. Uh, Chris, Chris Sanchez says, looking good on camera, Christian. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then we got tech. Do you try applying roller skate techniques to your free skate training? I feel like I could have learned free skating a whole lot smoother if I knew about the theory of balancing on edges and inline and ice skate. So do you, um, do you apply those techniques? Not really. Visually, I try to picture like... You know how like the the wheels are perpendicular to your foot. Yes. So I'm like, what if my foot was just naturally this way, like, and this is just forward? Uh, like, how do I like? I try to like visually pretend my foot was just misshapen and like <laughs> it's still straight. Like, what did what did I do when I turned right? What when you're when you do when you do 180, the other you know your back foot comes in front. 
right? If you're yeah. just if you're rollerblading, it's very similar. One of your feet goes in front. Yeah, anyway, yeah, like, it's just it's the- just like it almost like if everything is just a quarter turned back, basically. Yeah. So wow. I visually imagine that, but I wouldn't say that you need the skill because it's a completely different experience. Like you, when you fall on rollerblades, you're going to, you're going to fall. Like you hit a pebble or a stick, you're done. You hit a stick or pebble on free skates. You just like hop right off. There's always like a bail moment, like right before it's a completely different experience. And it does. Um, you're right. Uh, all these rides are completely different and you learn one and it doesn't necessarily mean you'll be good at the other. Um, yeah. So don't let that keep you. But also the falling thing, um, I will say it does take an experienced faller sometimes, especially at the beginning, to to know when that's about to happen. If you don't hop off your skates once you've hit a pebble, sure, you're going down. But you got to know, you got to step off once that happens so that you don't fall. And that's the advantage that you have uh, the capability mm-hmm. of doing. So I, I think I have a total of four falls my four entire falls free skating experience so far in a year that's not too bad yeah Um, and i've tried and i've tried like one footing dropping in and everything and it's like if you know how to keep your legs stick straight you know like together and not like if you're not used to cross footing and everything and you just know to keep your legs you know hip width apart and don't let them get too close because that's that's the first thing i see is everyone just tries to get it to go and i show it off to people and it's like no no, just hold your stance hold your stance and pretend it's a board pretend it's just a solid piece of wood and you're going to move and if you can hold that position like you have a better chance of like at least with everyone that i've shown so far they they have a better chance of staying on and at least moving a bit yeah because that's that's when you sweep that's uh when when they when they get close together um that's when bad things happen so don't do that yeah the first i think the four times that i fell was just my own uh stubbornness i didn't want to lose the trick so bad that i just it just i just stayed on too long i can i can totally relate um as far as falling at the beginning for anyone new um if it does freak you out uh wrist guards go a whole uh, go a long way um i haven't seen many if any situations where free skaters will hit their head all although never a bad idea to wear a helmet. I just think in my personal opinion, the wrist guards are like the biggest thing um, if you want to avoid hurting something because that's what I personally throw out first when I go in for a fall, especially when I was inexperienced. Um, And the more you fall, the more you learn how your body falls and you, you build up your instinct of being able to roll through a fall instead of just hitting the ground hard. So um moving on so back to your tricks so you want to do infinite spin how are your 360s at this point just a single 360. so single 360 is pretty solid i feel i can i can go pretty like at a steady pace and not lose momentum when i do it oh nice so my 360 one direction is good my 360 in switch however is almost complete i want to say we're like at 90 percent. i'm at the snap I'm struggling on that snap. 360 doing, Like, well, yeah, when you're going in switch. Okay, and then you do a 360 and end up... Like a, no, 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 no. So you have your... so I, Because I'm regular, normal 360, right? Yeah. And then I go on to switch and go the other way. Can you do a, a 360 going in switch? It's because it's going... Because one, my, my back leg now becomes my front leg. My front leg becomes my back leg. I don't know yeah. if I'm saying it right. <laughs> I think so. So what you're saying is... You're practicing a 360 in regular. And then I'm practicing it in switch. Okay. Because when in you go same, 360, you, you end in spin direction? Yeah, basically. Okay. I gotcha. That makes sense. So, and then the other thing you could try eventually is the opposite direction. So a clockwise spin, uh, which would mean you have to do a backside 360. Like it's a blind one. If yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, so, yeah. Another thing to try, but that's like, later down the road uh we have a good friend in the chat serenaded abyss is here uh front side and back side 360s he asks yeah so i think what we're referring to here is um since since christian here is a regular rider um his uh, 360s are counterclockwise his front side 360s starting the practicing starting them i believe in regular mm-hmm. and then starting them in switch but the same direction. So the switch one would be a backside 
switch 360 if that makes sense um yeah. but never the clockwise direction yet not yet just depending on just which side of the 180 that you start the 360 from yep uh crispy says i'm still struggling mightily with 180s you're struggling mightily i, ha I haven't heard that word in, in a while um let us know if we can help you chris of course we have those couple of 180 tutorial videos the initial official tutorial and then the why you can't 180. Uh, maybe i should re retitle that video why chris b can't 180. um so it appeals to you directly no i don't know uh so uh let me know uh maybe you can send some videos to us um, at jmk and we'll be sure to help you out tell you what you're doing incorrectly or obviously as you know the global free skaters uh chat is a great resource too so happy to help you um Cool. And uh, how are your 180s? Have you practiced uh, the clockwise direction, like I was saying, or not yet? Just the, just the. I can do, I can do 180s. I can do one. So I'm so terrible with the names. So I'm right. terrible with the names. So, yeah. so I can. So I, uh, if I'm in, if I'm in regular position, I can do. I guess yes, clockwise 180, where my back foot goes behind me, right? Yes. So I, I can do those. Okay. So I can do those. It took it, that one actually came to me pretty easy. It's the front one that actually was harder for me. Really? I mean, everyone's yeah. different. Um, yeah. Uh, Cuba Cheese, if you know who that is at this point, I believe he started with backside 180s um, mm -hmm. from his regular normal stance, which is just super trippy. It's every rider is different. Like I said, some some have a Are we back? Okay, I was gonna say we lost you. All right, looks like we. All right. So, are you back? <laughs> Was I gone? I thought you were gone. We we're, we're so on my end. We're both disappearing. This is the okay. first time on the Free Skates podcast that this has happened. Now twice, um, in a row. So, as I said in the comments, we'll see if this fixes itself. Um, hopefully, we can just continue talking. Um, Rip Gabe says serenaded abyss indeed. <laughs> uh, just gave freezing on my end interesting yeah on my end it shows both of us freezing out which i've never seen seems like a unique back end issue where it's cutting me out so um anyways um serenaded abyss says i haven't put much effort into backside 180s i'm probably going to practice that more often yes um always a good way to increase your comfort level in general um that kind of stuff is important uh crispy says ha huh, true i've watched it a few times uh maybe i'll send a bit Great. Yeah. Uh, let's help you get those down. Uh, he's recovering from COVID at the moment. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, hope you hope you heal up quick. Uh, wishing you all the best, Chris. Jason Lee says, just gave freezing. Serenade Abyss says, on the viewer side, it's just you. Okay, okay. Uh, Snow White said, start to go from me to buy Gabe. <laughs> yeah, my beefy PC can't handle this StreamYard software. It's too demanding. Um, no, um, jiggle a wire that always works, yeah, probably. Um, uh, said uh, crispy, uh, dang you, spectrum, how did you know? Uh, or get him new Wi Fi, yeah, maybe I'll switch to this. Chat has switched over to technical support at this point. Uh, tech says, I love backside 180s, I visualize it like doing a spinning back kick on taekwondo. Oh, that's actually, um, so that that's a good point because. Uh, I do uh, practice MMA with my daughter. Nice. Um, 
and a lot of the kicking techniques and a lot of the boxing stances actually free skates has helped me with those and those exercises have, have also helped me with free skates um it's crazy how the stance actually makes a difference so when i was learning because i've been practicing doing more tokyos and really getting bending that one leg is like a lunge it really is it's like a lunge and can you cross over we do we actually do these uh exercises called skaters where we go back and forth and do squats on each leg uh-huh. um and it's very similar to like doing tokyos on free skates so it's crazy how like you have to really work those little muscles because you have you know besides the big muscle you have micro muscles as well small, you know just smaller yeah. muscles muscle groups that need to be trained as well and free skates definitely has helped with the boxing aspects because like now i can keep my legs apart a lot easierly like just visualizing myself on free skates and then vice versa the exercises i learned there all of a sudden i can apply to uh my free skates so another example was learning recently i i, I learned how to um while moving um pick up one skate and then just drop it um and that comes with an exercise that we do as well where we have to you know one leg bend over pick up the weight come up and then set it down and just keep doing that wow. with one leg so we actually do that and my coach has no idea and and so i tell him i told him like yo like all, all the things you've shown me um apply to my skates and he's like what skates and i showed him and he's like get out of here he's, he didn't believe that they were real he thought i was controlling it with my phone wow yeah that's that's so interesting so yeah, uh, JMK is actually affiliated with a, uh, a champion jujitsu fighter. I don't know if you've ever been uh, that that's ever been explained to you, but um, yeah. his, his name is Barrett Yoshida. Um, he's uh, I, I'm not familiar entirely with jujitsu, so I apologize, but I believe it's a featherweight champion of I forget what year. He's he's been in the game for a while, but he's still still. Uh, still uh, fighting and still doing very well and um, we actually sponsor him so on is you know what it's called the the thing the the, the white, gi. yeah the gi yeah. that you wear uh, it says jmk ride down down oh, that's cool sides so it's super cool so we've gone to watch him fight and he says it does help train his legs in ways that he couldn't otherwise um yeah it, it does fly and and jujitsu as well as a guy by the name of kong a uh, former M- mma fighter um, who's 350 plus pounds, so heavyweight, I, I believe it's what you would call it. Um, he also used the free skates to train. So it applies. I just never heard it um, explained in this particular way where there's the specific exercises and drills that directly apply to some of these free skate tricks. Yeah, there, there's, there's, it's crazy. Um, like, like, like I said, the lunging, a lot of the lunges really helped me with my 180s. Like once, once I started getting in those positions, cause like, like I, I guess I can connect the dots because I do both, right? I do all, I do the exercises and then I go skate. And yeah. so when we're, when I'm doing them, all of a sudden I'm in a particular position. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, this is like, this is totally a lunge, you know, it's like, you know, or like, oh, this is totally a squat. It's, it's, it's weird how they, they connect, but it did, I think it did help with my progression because you do have to build those awkward muscles like in your legs when you're free skating. Cause it's not. Oh, I think I lost you. <laughs> I think we're back. I think you're back, but I lost you. At, like, you made the best face. I thought you were still listening intently to my story. And oh, <laughs> I was so like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. Noticed- but you were frozen. Wow. So I don't know what part I left off on. <laughs> so uh, let's hope that doesn't happen again. Um, sorry for the for the difficulties, everybody. I wonder if it's my internet, but right now it looks fine. Um, so basically, most of the section that it, it went back to you, um, if you could say that again, or at least summarize. <laughs> I think I was just trying to say that. Um, just a lot of those exercises work those awkward muscles that you need for free skating. Yeah. Like I think uh, like the, in, the ones inside your legs get a lot of workout that never got worked out before um, areas of your calves, you know, that get trained that you normally wouldn't do. Mm-hmm. Um, you could like, I've done the calf machine all my life, but, but going on free skates, you definitely work 
different parts of that calve out, you know? Yeah. So um, maybe sometimes that, that could help just doing the exercise. If you could find the exercise that correlates to that specific trick, you know? Yeah. I'm excited to see um, more people in that space discover uh, free skating and more further, further explore how, how this is all connected because, you know, I'm learning something new today. Didn't know there were that many similarities, which is cool. Um, uh, I had a question for you, Gabe. Yes. Before I forget, before I forget, um, I don't think I ever heard how you got into free skating. Yeah. So the brief version of that is, I was in college and I found someone um, while I was walking to class and somebody zoomed past me on free skates. At the time, I thought they were just like a, a ball under each foot. I didn't even know what I was looking at. But this dude was speedy, so way way too fast for me to even consider asking let alone being interested in what they were because i didn't even have time to process it it's like that was weird and then like the following semester it is when i saw them the next time and that's when i got the chance to be like okay so what's going on here so the two guys that existed at the campus that actually rode free skates only two of them they both kind of co-taught me how to free skate and the three of us started the free skate club at that college um and just tried to with the goal of getting as many people into the sport as possible um so i kind of um built up my uh, uh progress in my initial year or two around just just a few college friends that also free skated and that was my community um most of my riding was very routine to class every day um along this whole journey i'm also getting really into photography and videography so one thing led to another and um, JMK had asked me, like, will you do our video content? Because it seems you like taking videos of free skates. So that's how I ended up moving out here from the Midwest. But um, so those first two years of free skating were at Iowa State. Then the last three years of the five that I've been free skating have been here in San Diego uh, with um, some of the, the greatest people as inspirations um, that I could ask for. So um alongside me so that's awesome yeah the the biggest thing i would say from all of that is making sure you have people to free skate with um if if at all possible because um it it, you really learn a whole lot quicker and that's also just an advantage of having an online community like this too i know that's i i was telling my daughter like you never know where a hobby could go right it's like yeah. year, you know a year ago i was like here's these skates and just, i'm wobbling you know just trying to figure it out and a year later i get to talk to you and i'm like that guy's awesome because i watch your videos and i you know it's oh, like cool. she you know she's young and she doesn't see that it's like very possible to like meet people and connect with people you know just because they're on a screen you think it's impossible it's like no you just you never know you know just keep trying so yeah. I think that's awesome. But speaking mm-hmm. of community, if there's anyone in Ventura County that's a free skater, please look me up because I'm so lonely over here. <laughs> I think yeah. I'm like I think on the friend app thing, I might be the only one here. On the free skater finder? Yeah. Because I can't. Um, I'm, it's just me. I just go to random skate parks, seeing you know what's up. Maybe I'll catch someone free skating. But no, just uh, it's just always just me by myself. Um, let's see. Uh, I want, I want to see, uh, who all is. So where is Ventura County? It's, um, between Ventura and Los Angeles. So like three hours away from you guys, I believe. Uh, which direction from Los Angeles? North. Oh, from, oh yeah. A little bit North, a little bit North, like a smidge, not a lot. A smidge. Like near look towards Malibu area. Towards Malibu. Malibu and then go a little bit up into the hills and you'll near see. Thousand Oaks? It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Thousand Oaks, Thousand Oaks, Westlake. Christian Santana, and there's one other person in that area. One. Really? Yeah. Um oh. they free skate for fun in the eight oh five area. Is that where you are? Yes. Uh, their name is Jai, 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 uh, you, you may have to look, uh, but check it out. Uh, yeah. for anyone watching the free skater finder is a cool resource. Uh, it's free skater finder dot I'll paste that in the chat. If any of you during this stream want to go, 
Um, well, or after the stream, if you're like on a phone or something, um, check that out. That's in the comments for you to look at. So we can circle back to um, some of your stuff here. Um, I was actually going to ask about the MMA, but you segued perfectly into oh. all that <laughs> stuff. Um, oh, yeah, were so your, your free skates that you started with, were those JMKs too? Or did you have an off-brand too when you started? So I started with an off-brand. So the first, that initial time that dude speeded past me, he was on what I think were some Amazon pair. Um, and then the other guy I met was also on um, some knockoff pair. So we didn't really know anything about JMK. So me and this dude that zoomed by, we eventually became friends. And one day uh, we bump into each other on campus and he said, dude, like, yeah, I got to sit you down and like, you got to check this out. So he like whips up his laptop, whips open his laptop and types in jmkride.com. He's like, there's these dudes, uh, they're at they have this company called JMK. It's brand new. Like, do you think I should get a set? And I was like, this is so cool. Yeah, you should. So we opened them together. And that was my first time seeing JMKs is um, th this first dude that I saw at Iowa State. Um, uh, but back to your original question, none of us had JMKs at the beginning. But because of him getting that set for the first time, we all eventually kind of saw the light and like, OK, we, we got it. We got to get these JMKs or obviously a lot better. And that trickled down to a lot of the a lot of the people that we taught as a part of this free skating program um, started the JMKs right off the bat because we showed them what they were. They were like, this is the obvious thing to get. So a bunch of them got JMKs as well. And it and it was successful for a good bit. Um, yeah. So cool. Very, very, very positive first experience with JMK skates as it is for, I think, every free skater. <clears throat> So, yeah, that's how it went for me. Anybody have any questions for either me or uh, Matthew? Or Matthew, I was just talking to Matthew earlier today. Christian, while we're still on here. <laughs> for my feelings, Gabe. Yeah, right. I'm so sorry. Um, that's my bad. That, that'll, be, that'll be a future secret guest on this podcast. Uh, uh, Chris B says, I could see l lunges helping with 180. When I'm bringing my back leg forward, I tend to fall to my right where my front foot turned, but should rather lunge forward with the back one. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, you definitely want to carry that center of mass forward. Make sure your weight is also just always distributed. I try and illustrate that a bit in the Why You Can't 180 video. Um, but yeah, you're correct there. Chris Sanchez says, what is your favorite type of chocolate? <laughs> Reese's. Reese's. Ooh. This is difficult. You're putting me on the spot, unless I was directed towards uh, Christian. Hershey's. Oh. <laughs> I uh, got to ask the staple question. What's your favorite? What's Christian's favorite color combo? Like on the skates? I think so. Um, I started with like the, like the Rasta colors one, mm -hmm. the yellow, green, red one. I was yeah. a big, big Bob Marley fan growing up. So nice. Yeah, the Rasta is a, a cool go-to. I believe we still have that um, available. Are we good? I froze. Um, uh, on the website, I believe that's still there. Rasta complete set available now. But um, cool. Uh, I know that wasn't direct, directed towards me, but... I don't know. I'm a huge fan of that uh, the the two tone uh, configuration. So having one skate be all one color and the other skate being a completely different color. I did I did the same. My second pair is just all one color. Oh really? Yeah. Is it, are they both? Or what what color is it? I think it's all black. All black. That was it's my all first black. Set. Yeah. That was my first ever set 
I actually want to pull that up. Um, my very first set of free skates ever. Oh, sorry, JMK free skates ever. I remember being so stoked when I got these for Christmas. So, yeah, I got them. I I got it for Christmas in the in a box that was like this big, and it was a sheet of paper saying that they were ordered because <laughs> uh, they hadn't shown up yet. And then finally, um, it was snowing outside when I got them. I took them outside, took some photos, and uh, there is just a brand new set there. Yep, on on my railing there. It's a little bright though. I wonder. Yeah, there we go. They they look so good when they're all black. It's because um, I I find that the brighter colored wheels though, because I end up skating on a lot of um, asphalt, mm. um, they get they get dirty really fast. And you don't notice so much if at all on the black. Yeah, so that's why that my black ones are like the one I'm going to use to just kind of destroy and get dirty, and then I'll keep like the colorful ones for when I'm like at the skate park and trying to keep it nice. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Good, good tactic there. Yeah, like kind um, of have like a, like a training pair, and then like like a show offy pair. You know, like 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 when you wear your nice shoes. Yeah. No, I that, that's I, I I relate. I I have a flat set, like I said, that I like to keep a little more in shape right now. Cleaner, flatter, less um, gritty environments, so I can keep the wheels fresh. Um, Snow White says, "Chrome trucks, all caps. Are they back?" Mm -hmm. um answer is unfortunately no at the moment um i don't know when chrome trucks are coming back we may have silver um sorry i lied it doesn't appear that we have silver i don't know if this is just currently not updated we did get a bunch of trucks in just now but i think they were very specific colors in our order so what what's on the site should be what we have in stock currently i can double check for you um maybe send me a dm we're in the middle of trying to update all that, actually. So, uh, Chris B says, do you cruise trails ever or mostly just tricks and practice? And I'll direct that towards you, Christian. Um, I do. Um, I live near a mall, so I'll just cruise. I have recently just started practicing just cruising just to see if I can just around town because I hadn't really tried that until actually just recently. Oh. My first, yeah, my first year, I should have done more cruising, but I was so focused. I like, I found a space, and I would just practice in that area in that space. But now that I feel really comfortable moving, I was like, you know, I should try seeing if I can go places. So I now I do cruise all the way down to like the mall. It's like a few blocks away now, so I feel like my space that I skate is now like a good half a mile circumference. You know, like around from nice. my house. So You're expanding. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, cruising is fun, especially like, I don't know, I feel like that's got to be really cool discovering like, oh, I can cruise. Like um, when you're at a point when you're you're now comfortable on the skates, I would say maybe in your first week, even if you wanted to cruise, you probably couldn't, at least not effectively. Yeah, so, it, yeah, because yeah. even for me, it was like going uphill was a, a struggle when you're first learning. But now yeah. going uphill feels nothing like you could just I, I just feel like it's the same as flat ground. You know? Yeah, you just have to work harder. Yeah, um, there is a limit because it gets harder and harder to work those muscles if it's like this. Yeah. You know? um, but once you know how to go uphill, you know how to go uphill. It uh, doesn't really make a difference. Snow White says, I once did the Cape Cod Rail Trail for 30 miles. 30 On miles is a long <laughs> ways away. It's a long ways. I hope there are some downhill sections or, or flat where you can just cruise. That's that's wild. Serenaded Abyss says, I have just have two sets of trucks and swap them. For is that what you do? Or for the chrome? Or it's something you could do. Pro tip if you ever do want to have that uh, situation where you can swap out trucks and you might be confused because your grip is sealed off because uh, you can't see the bolts anymore, you can actually just poke your Allen key into the grip and it'll create two hex-shaped holes that you can, just like it was a, if it was a skateboard, just loosen the bolts, 
swap out your truck if you're really that particular about keeping your combo um, switched <laughs> up. And then he says wheels. Nice. Oh, for the wheels. Okay. So like switching out flat and round wheels? Yeah, so I, was, I was thinking of getting an, another pair too, just yeah. for different wheels. That's interesting. I, I, I've i never, up till this point, I've never really thought of the possibility of having one set of free skates and then in a smaller form factor, just carrying two trucks with you that have a different type wheel type on it. So then you just unscrew one set of trucks and then slap the other trucks on the deck. That would be even more convenient if they like slot it in. You just go and it latches into the deck plate without bolts. That'd be awesome. I just don't know how just, secure, just carry wheels. Just I, carry I don't know how secure that wheels. would be. Yeah, I don't know how secure that would be, but I'm just thinking of a satisfying sound of click, like when the wheels snap in and then there's like a lever or something that you can, or a pin that you can pull to, I don't know. I'm just starting to think of ideas now. Revo End says, have either of you ever tried non-JMK bearings on your free skates? So for me, um, well, when we both initially had knockoff free skates, they were not JMK bearings. And let me tell you, they are most often um, stiffer than you would like. So it makes, you, you can't roll nearly as fast. The learning process is a lot more difficult. It's just overall an inconvenience. So yes, we've tried non-JMK bearings. Um, I have never found a better bearing than the um, actual JMK ones for our wheels, which is good because you get the stock bearing and you don't have to worry about upgrading. So from any other skateboarder or longboarder that uh, holds our skates for the first time, a lot of times the first thing they say is, wow, these wheels spin forever because they really do. And they stay that way even when they get a little louder and uh, have some dirt in there. Um, they just keep spinning. I don't know about you. I didn't let you answer that question yet. Oh, no. For me, I, you heard my Amazon story at the beginning. It's just I'm not going to mess with mixing, matching products anymore, <laughs> you know? Okay. So for me, I, it's like... Is mostly what you know. Yeah. So it's like it works. I haven't had any issues. I'm not going to mess with it, you know? If it ain't broke. It right? Yeah. Uh, Snowlight says, please, please, please add classic wheel options to the custom builder. Um, so we have some stuff created as far as, um, the files to make that happen. I think functionality is on the, um, European website, if I'm not wrong. So if you go to bamkeride-europe.com, there is a classic wheels skate configurator. I think that's more for Europe. Um, as to why that's not USA, I would have to confirm why that is. Or no, maybe, no, they do it differently, I think. They might just input it in a form, like what you want. Let me make sure. Nope, you can totally build it on the Europe website. I can try and figure out why that's not the case. Or if it is the case, tell you where to find it on the USA website. I should, I should know the answer to that. Have you guys ever just uh, thought of like uh, glow in the dark wheels? I'm just curious. Um, we, I don't think so. I don't think so. However, we are planning some glowy, some added glowy products um, in the semi. I'm not going to say near future, but in the future, we have some glowy, more glowy stuff planned. Um, don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but I don't think glow up wheels yet. That's I, cool only, idea. I only ask because um, there's a lot of roller rinks you can go to, and some of them are pretty cool. They'll let you bring in your free skates. Yeah. And so since it's, so since, you know, it's colorful and when you're in there, like everything's all lit up, it'd be kind of cool to have them lit just to have oh, that yeah. option for like, for the roller like ring places. Yeah, I saw I saw some videos on on your stuff, and uh, it was cool that they let you in the rink. Um, I actually go to a rink back in the Midwest, and I'm fingers crossed they 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 let me actually use my free skates. Um, 
that'll be here in a few days here. Um, that would be sick, uh, says Serenity Abyss. Um, you may want to hit up Kyoki about that. He would be the guy. I can go ahead and ask him. Uh, make them common rider themed. Ooh, common rider theme. Or common, sorry. So this, the, this, if you like Power Rangers, if you like Power Rangers back in the day, uh, it comes right before them, right before the Power Rangers series uh, back in Japan. Since all Power Rangers are like recrop footage. Oh. Yeah, they take the Japanese footage and then just like film, you film it with like live actors. Uh, but the actual like combat scenes are usually taken from the Japanese footage. So the Kamen Rider uh, was a, a series similar to that. I didn't know that. Interesting. I'm a, I'm a big movie guy and TV guy. So big nerd. All I watch is YouTube. <laughs> Uh, Snow White says you'd have to use JMK bearings with racers. JMK makes really good bearings, but any quality bearings, bones, uh, e.g., uh, will work, but you've got to make sure they'll fit. Yeah, that's the thing. Is compatibility is always uh, interesting. Uh, Revo N says, interesting. The JMK bearings seem really nice. I'm just really curious to someday try some of the high-quality bearings with good reputation in the skate community, i.e. Bones Reds. I would also say there's like ceramic things that are expensive too, but um, yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, can't always guarantee, especially from the company's perspective. But, um, you know, JMK is uh, tried and true. Um, Serenaded Abyss says, I used to use mini logo bearings on my non-JMK skates. Now I use built-in spacer bearings for them. But I ride my JMKs these days and nothing else. Uh, nice. Uh, Snow White says, racer bearings have built-in spacers that fit with all the other components. I tried putting standard bearings into my skates, and they did not fit with the other hardware. Uh, great to know. Very interesting. Uh, Snow White's will stick with this James K's. Uh, save the headache. All right. Got a got a nice conversation going on there in the chat. Um, we are. Uh, do you have any more questions for for me um, or anything else you want to talk about while we're on here? Uh, uh, I'll be in San Diego this weekend. Uh, oh. Conveniently, it was uh, it's just a matter of convenience just because uh, we had planned this trip prior. Um, we're going to go and like go to the Whaley house and like uh, and just visit the sites and stuff. Um, but I always wanted to go to your guys' Thursday meetups because um, you guys are to me, it's like you're not that far. You know, you're, I think you're only like two and a half hours away. You should um, come more often. Sure. I would I would love to if I could just make the drive, but you know, work. So yeah, work. because we have this trip planned, I was like, I know what I'm doing Thursday. And so yeah. I told everyone, I told everyone on my agenda for Thursday, I'm definitely gonna go to that uh meetup. So so then I'll get I actually get to meet you guys for the first time and uh hopefully you guys can show me all the things I'm doing wrong. Or all the things you're doing right, everything in between. Um Unfortunately, me personally, I will be out of town Monday, uh, Thursday through Sunday. So um, <laughs> you being so close, I'm sure after going to this meetup and maybe even the Friday skate, um, you, um, you, you'll you want to come back eventually. It's good that you're close. So um, yeah, Tech is asking, are you going to go to Free Skate Fridays too? I didn't know there was Free Skate Fridays. Yes, Free Skate Fridays, uh, literally the morning after that Thursday night skate, we hit the Mission Beach Boardwalk along the coast. Um, it's a mile and a half skate, followed by a couple more hours of just jamming in place and talking with friends and roller skaters and whatever. And oh, okay, so I've seen those videos. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> okay. There's a bunch of tourists walking by, always asking about the skates. You can really show off because none of these people have ever seen Free Skates before, and it's, it's, it's a great hop in spot to hang with like-minded skaters. So those two things are like the go-to events for any free skater that visits SD. And unfortunately I will be missing both this week. Um, plus just the entire weekend. So please do um, uh, knowing that you, you will thoroughly enjoy those skates this week. Excited for you to make the visit again. Um, Revo N says, yeah, they did an insta live stream during last week's. That was cool. During last week's? Oh, uh, during the actual skate? Or we did back at the HQ. 
um, either way there. Um, it's all fun. Yeah. So we do that Thursday skate and the next morning we do Friday skate. And then after that, some of us will go back to the HQ and we'll do a live stream to our social media. At the end of the week, it's just the end of the week is just full of skating at JMK, which is really fun. So excited for you to experience that. Um, I'm excited to skate with no interruptions. You know what I mean? <laughs> no like, interruptions. Yeah. Like it's, I'm on, I'm on like a little mini vacation. So I'm like, I can skate to my heart's content kind of thing. Don't have to like go back to work and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, you can, you can get tips from not just Maddie and Jeff, but like tons of other free skaters that are at these meetups that are, you're, you're able to just, you know, pick their brains and teach them stuff. They can teach you stuff and it's, it's all a great time. So, um, cool. Nice. Well, um, as long as nobody else has any questions or things to add, I think we can um, close out this episode of the podcast. A little note for next week's um, episode 38 will be happening at noon um, on Tuesday. PST. 12, 12 p.m. PST. So um, thank you guys for joining this episode of the podcast. If you haven't yet, please feel free to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. And we will see you on social media and next week for episode 38. Uh, thanks, everyone. And uh, have a good day.